Thank you for joining me for another Quick Hits Conversation. I'm Dr. Robin. With me today, I have Cami Travis Groves, who is a good juju spreader. And I have Tim Hawks, who is a mental engineer and executive coach in the UK. The question I want to ask you is, how do you know if someone is your friend? Tim, kick us off. Yeah, well, thanks, Robin. And uh, oh, what a great question. I sat there and thought, well, I must know the answer to this as I have friends. Uh, but didn't quickly come up with an answer. No disrespect to any of my friends watching. So I thought I'll do what every self-respecting uh, clever person does. I'll Google it. <laughs> and uh, I was met with these things like friends of people who sort of stick around and look after you. And, and I'm thinking, well, I've got friends that I have not spoken to in 10 years. So I sort of dismissed the Google uh, results and then started to think about, well, what is it that uh, makes people friends with me? And, uh, and I was thinking there's things in there like sort of trust and uh, resolving difficulties together and, uh, you know, um, being there, got each other's back, things like that. Mm. People must have different criteria for being friends, because if you were not somebody who needed your back or you were very data orientated and you wanted a data type relationship, that would be different. So I'm wondering whether it's and this is part of what I'd like to find out from this discussion, whether it's different for everybody. Mm. What a wonderful question. The first thing that popped into my head was, how does that person make you feel? Mm. And do they make you feel safe? Do they, do they make you feel like your trust is in a good place? Do they make you feel respected and treasured? And I would say, yeah, that person's in a good position to be a friend. If you don't feel safe, if you don't feel revered or treasured in some way, and if you don't feel respected, mm. totally falls off the planet of friend zone. No, no, no. <laughs> I feel like there are people in my life who say all the right things and they say how amazing I am. And oh my goodness, I'm so glad you're my friend, but they never ask me about me. Mm. They don't know me. And I'm like, what does that mean? That's, that's somebody else looking for a friend and they found you. Yeah. It's, uh, a, it's a two way. It's a dance. It has to be two way. Mm -hmm. If you are the one who plans everything, if you are the one asking all the questions, if you are the one doing all the caring, then how authentic is that friendship? Mm -hmm. It's interesting, Cam, I, I came away with the word nourish, but I'm not sure it's, you didn't use that word. But Treasured, you, but yeah, nourished. Yeah, the sort of that, uh, that support of being there. And I'm thinking, I don't have that need. Mm -hmm. And then I'm thinking, do I? Yes, you and do. then I'm not sure. <laughs> and then I'm thinking, maybe it's because I'm a bloke. And I'm thinking, don't be so ridiculous. And then uh, I don't think I need that. And that does sum up the fact that you know yeah respect many of the other things I totally agreed with I think you know connection and you know and I think that feeling at ease with each other is essential I think without that you know if you had any uncertainty then the, it, it, that relationship surely wouldn't blossom uh, I wonder whether people know whether they're certain about it or not do you know whether you're being manipulated or not mm. but that's a whole different ball game isn't it you know oh you, gosh, you might sort of feel oh well they are my friend because they stick around and I need a friend is different to, I just feel happy in this person's place. Yeah. Mm. When there's that gut feeling of, mm, you have millions of neural cells in your gut and you have them for a reason. We have the same amount of neural cells in our gut as a cat has in its brain. And so your, my stomach is as smart as a cat. Your gut is definitely, and your heart <laughs> has about 40,000 neurons. Uh, neural cells the capable of some very rudimentary thought and all the signals that travel between the brain and these organs 80 percent goes from the organs to the brain so it's not the brain telling the organs what's to do it's the the organs saying excuse me excuse me there's information here hmm. and so oftentimes we just disregard that we say well you know this person like robin you were saying oh this person's nice to me they say all the right things but your gut says mm, something's not right here I think that's a really good point. Westernized culture suppresses that noise from heart and gut, doesn't it? It's somewhere around here, something just sort of stops it and says, no, no, I must go facts and figures and uh, nothing else. You know, I must go on the data here. And actually, you're right. Sometimes the gut's the answer. And, and maybe the simple answer to the question is, if your gut tells you they're a friend, they're in. <laughs> <laughs> Until they I, prove themselves otherwise. I was going to say, I've had that yeah. happen too, where I thought <laughs> someone was my friend and then realized, wow, they just cut me really badly. And you ha that's where you have to say, when someone shows you who they are, believe them and remember. Because I think that's the hardest thing is if you think someone's your friend and then they're really harsh to you and they treat you not friend-like, how many chances do you give them before you're like, nope, we're not friends? One, one and done. Yeah. I heard yeah. Great yeah. And I think that in itself is an interesting discussion is that how long do you 
withstand uh, be negative behavior that you sense as being negative before you do cut the noose or cut the loose, cut it loose, whatever we want to call it. And, um, I think, yeah, uh, uh, you're right. It's once. Yeah, mm -hmm. once. I heard a, a great quote from Brene Brown who said, we like to think that we are rational, logical creatures with bouts of emotion, when in fact we are highly emotional beings with bouts of re reason and logic. And, and when we think about what that emotional state is, it's being in touch with all of our emotions and being in touch with all of the information that we're getting from our body intrinsically, extrinsically, exteroception, interoception, all of it. And uh, to pay attention to those feelings and you'll know who your friends are. Mm -hmm. I've been told in my life, well, you have to forgive people. Yes, I can forgive them. That doesn't mean I have to give them the right to re-abuse me. Yes, exactly. And okay. forgiving someone doesn't necessarily mean you walk up to them and you say, I forgive you. A lot of that has to do with forgiving yourself, forgiving that past version of yourself for making whatever mistakes or for not knowing and then saying, yay, now I know. <laughs> One of the hardest things you'll ever do is forgive yourself for believing someone who lied to you. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, can I change the subject? Because something else in my Google search that came up that was very interesting, not because I wasn't, didn't want to take that on, but that was way too meaty for the time we have left. Something it said about um, with your friends and your relationships and things like that. Um, now, what did I write down? Oh, that's right, about being clumsy around them. So this is a word I like in my work. About, I'm allowed to be clumsy, whether it be, oh, I'm a fool, I forgot my house keys again. And that person understands. Um, and then there was another thing in there which said about, you know, people who aren't mean to you or nasty to you. Uh, but some of my friends are quite mean to me, but we have a relationship where that's totally fine. And we understand, okay, there's a, there's a line that gets crossed, you know, and all that stuff. Um, but I don't think necessarily true that it's not people that are mean to you. you. You want a friend to be direct to you when you want them to be direct to you. Mm. But you need to go to the doctors and you're not going. You want your friends to say, come on, you know, let, let me take you. Let's go. We'll do this together. You don't want them to sort of go, oh, well, I won't, I won't push this. But mm. I, I think there's, there's quite an interesting line there, isn't there, around uh, one about being comfortable in their space so that you can be clumsy. Um, but secondly, around how far can can you push this relationship with you know all right big nose yeah 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 all right you know that sort of level to before it becomes nasty and unpleasant and it's all about how you receive it isn't it if you're both i'm okay you're okay we're okay but if somebody slips out of okay but isn't clear about it the relationship begins to sour in some way doesn't it mm -hmm. and i think it's about making sure that you're okay and i'm okay that's good friendship yeah tim i think what you described the the being clumsy that's being vulnerable yeah absolutely Absolutely. And you can is, only yeah. have that deep human connection through the door of vulnerability. That only happens through the door of vulnerability. So mm. whether you feel like I can be silly, I can be clumsy, I can be childlike, I can be, you know, hoity just for fun. All of these things a, a true friend would say, yep, that's part of you and I love you anyway. <laughs> I know I've had situations where I've been not okay. And I've said to, to someone I thought was my friend, I am not okay. And the look of shock that came across their face, like it wasn't okay for me to not be okay, immediately tells me, ooh, vulnerability here is not safe. Mm, mm. Yeah, on. and it's a good test for friendship. I think the I'm okay, you're okay space is, is, is definitely a good test of friendship because, you know, even if you are generally a vul vulnerable or anxious person, you know, you will find a space with somebody else where you can feel stronger or fulfilled, nourished, mm. let's come back to that word. But it might be that you, you have that clumsiness, that vulnerability can just flow in that space. You know, I'm rubbish, I'm hopeless. No, you're not, but don't worry about it. You know, and so therefore you find your level of I'm OK, you're OK, whether it be in that sort of pool of anxiety or whether it be in that pool of arrogance. I mean, we all know that friendship relationships that are in a pool of arrogance, don't we? So. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. <laughs> I find it very hard to be vulnerable. And mm. um, I think about my best friend right now. She calls me out on it. She just rolls her eyes. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, she calls me out. She she allows me to be vulnerable. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and carries you into a space where the discomfort occurs. But in that space, your learning also occurs. And then you can oh. take that learning on to other relationships and into your work and into your social relationships and everything else that you do, which is a really satisfying, in fact. Yeah. What a wonderful conversation. Thank you so much. I have enjoyed it. I know a red flag for me is if I have a feeling and someone tells me, no, you're not allowed to feel that way. That's a red flag that, oops, that's not a friendship. 
So thanks so much. I appreciate it. I look forward to having another conversation with each of you again really soon. Thanks, Robin.